Hey guys, if you're new here, my name is Naima. Welcome to another lessons video. If you're new here, basically this video is just going to be me kind of just verbally reflecting on my month and the things that I feel like God is teaching me, the things that I think I'm learning as I'm just growing up and going through different experiences. And my hope is just to offer up some vulnerability and some authenticity for like you to see a deeper like kind of like you can see like my vlogs and you can see like my instagram posts and you can see like my happy moments but there's also so much going behind the scenes and it's also so important to just be able to talk about like what the lord is doing and how he is moving just so that we can um be encouraged and i would just encourage you to just definitely reflect on your months because i feel like until you kind of start writing down like what you feel like god is teaching you and like l different lessons you're learning you don't really realize how much you're learning and how much you're growing and how much he's working and like i'm not saying that like, you have to write down things but that that's just kind of like whatever that's just like a long ramble um anyways so june and may very 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 busy months something i've been working with a lot is just busyness like i'm gonna be honest with you this whole week i haven't really had my quiet time and it's been really throwing me off and um yeah it's just been getting to me and i just want to also put out there that this might be like the most like unprepared lessons video i've ever done like the, my camera has like half battery I don't have everything prepared I just feel like a mess right now so just so you know what you're getting into um <laughs> anyways so I really pray that God uses this and it can serve as an encouragement to you or like maybe we're going through the same thing and um yeah so the months were pretty good filled with a lot of happy moments and memories and a lot of lessons um so let's just start it off okay because the sun is going down the lighting's getting really weird i know we're in this right now i know we're in this first thing if loving god and loving others are the most two important commandments like that jesus came and like talked about then why wouldn't we be tempted to store bitterness that would keep us from that love um and i just feel like it's interesting to like think of things like that for example like if god calls us to um like purity then it makes sense that like we feel like i like can't focus right now because this lighting is really bothering me and god can do such amazing things like through loving other people and i feel like he's just been teaching me that like when you love someone despite them having hurt you when you love someone despite all these things and then like the fruit that comes from that and if, if we're called to love, the temptation is going to be bitterness. If we're called to um, purity, the temptation is going to be impurity. If we're called to faithfulness, the temptation is going to be rebellion. You know, like, it's just, it's just really cool to think of things like that because you kind of get to be prepared to be like, okay, if I'm being called to love right now, the opposite is to be bitter and to store anger. And I'm going to be aware and like more watchful of me doing that because we're bound to, I mean, ha have bitterness, but we just don't want to store that because then we, we're not going to be able to really love rightly or out of genuineness. So, and that's again, something like you would give to God, not like you would deal with it yourself. And that's so hard to give up sometimes but yeah that's a little bit about that i feel like it's huge like loving anyways but like in the name of jesus crazy okay next thing you don't have to fill up every single chunk of time you should leave space to like walk slow sometimes and rest and stretch and enjoy life and just live your life um and just like enjoy the moment and it's like cheesy but i mean it's what i'm learning right now and I just have these moments where I get like a little bit burnt out. I used to get so, so burnt out, like to the point where I would need full on recovery days just in my bed doing nothing because I actually could not feel my body and I could not function because I was so like emotionally drained, physically drained, just like burnt out. And so I, I definitely, it's been a process that like God has been walking with me through. 
um, or I've been walking with God through. And yeah, so I feel like sometimes I just get really tired and I am just like in my nature, it's like I'm a fast walker. Like we're going somewhere, why why are we going slow? If someone's driving just the speed limit, I get upset. So like that's like keep in mind that's where I'm coming from. And so like it's okay to like don't walk like you have a purpose. Like just like aimlessly stroll the mall. Like you don't need to like be so uptight, girl. I need to tell that to myself. Cause like it's great to have a mission and to be driven, but like you need to have those rest days. You need to have those days where like you go and maybe get your nails done or you go get a coffee. And it's not that you're power walking. It's not that you're trying to rush in your rest. You're enjoying your rest and you're savoring your rest so that you can go and do your work. Don't be so quick to speak and don't speak on your own authority. Um, this kind of goes along with something I wrote down for June also, um, which is if you don't have anything to say, don't say it. <laughs> and I think I'm naturally like a convo filler like if no one's talking I'll oftentimes just I've noticed that I just jump in and I'm just like I try to fill this space and I try to make people feel comfortable and while that's not a bad thing I don't need to say everything that comes to my mind I don't need to like I think that's very unwise to do that and um Cam who's my boyfriend if you don't know he is so slow to speak and he's just very wise in like what he puts out and I think I've just been learning from him like I don't know like I don't have to fill every second of time I have with someone with a conversation and I don't have to like be super chatty about it like I can just live my life and like if there's moments of silence like that's beautiful it's okay there can be moments of silence you don't have to just talk 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 okay so this is huge and this is something like really big and i think that it's just a bigger theme that i want to keep fresh on my mind and it's keep your flesh from being satisfied to allow god space and time to satisfy areas of your heart because sometimes i feel like gratifying your flesh can look like so many different things and it's kind of like when you gratify your flesh and when you just kind of listen to that little voice that tells you to like go against God, it's kind of like scratching an itch almost. And it's like, ah, oh, finally, like I feel better. And it's like when you don't do that and when you don't um, satisfy your flesh, you kind of feel like a little bit hungry. You feel like something's like maybe you feel like a little restless because you're not doing something that like maybe your body's asking you to do or you feel like you want to do but it's not in alignment with God that space of like not being satisfied in whatever you want to do in the moment I feel like is is room for God to move in and for him to work and like yeah for him to for him to be working and for him to be healing and like it gives him opportunity to shine honestly um but i i love, i don't know how to like word it otherwise i don't know if that makes sense or not but okay this is a repeated mindset that i've been having you're right where you need to be god is preparing you for big things it's important to have someone in your corner cheering you on saying that to you or like having that written down somewhere because sometimes life is so hard and sometimes you wonder like what why the heck am I even here why did God place me in this specific place because this seems so difficult this seems so hard I just don't understand and it's like for me it's been like instead of grumbling about my circumstances and instead of being angry and being bitter it's like let's just step back for a second God has me where he wants me let's see what does he want me to do now it's time to be sensitive to the voice and like under like what does he want me to do what am i i'm here for a reason because you don't make mistakes what's my role how do i fulfill my role here what what is so i feel like that's been a huge thing for me and like cam has been really amazing about like encouraging that for me and like because circumstances are circumstances like sometimes it's just hard and I feel like it's comforting and just true. Like, you were right where you need to be. Like, 
even if you're crying or you just like went through something hard like you're right where you need to be that's it i have to be quicker i'm like talking slower and slower by the minute because like my car is really hot and i'm just i feel myself slowing down right now <laughs> okay so in the bible study class that i go to we were talking about sheep one time and it was there was just like i think it's just a very cool fact that sheep only respond to their shepherd and i feel like that that's so cool to think about because if you know the bible you know that there's like a ton of analogies and parables like using sheep and like like the lord is oftentimes referred to as a shepherd and how like we are the sheep and sometimes like sheep can get lost and whatever and so it's so cool because like there was a whole video where like there's like there's like a bunch of random people trying to call the sheep being like what well, kind of sheep whatever the sheep don't even lift their head for those people the sheep only come running to their shepherd and i just think that that's cool um and also it's interesting to think about sheep without a shepherd at all and how it's like there's so much chaos and i just that's just interesting i wanted to put it out there if you want, look up videos of, like, sheep without shepherd or, like, sheep and shepherd just to see, like, it's really cool. Next, I have a little analogy. This is a little bit different. I don't know why this, like, came to my mind, but it did. So, basically, if you didn't know, we just moved into a new apartment and, um, <laughs> I hate bugs. And we have, like, a little centipede problem. It's better now, but, like... When we first moved in, there was a ton of centipedes, and it just freaked me out. Um, and I just don't do good with bugs. I'm, I don't like killing the bugs. Um, I don't even want to step on a bug because it just freaks me out. So with that in mind, seeing the centipede this one afternoon after a long day of school, it got to me. It got to me in this way. And it was in the bathroom, too. I was doing my business. I saw the centipede. And I freaked out and I screamed and it was crazy. And then I left the bathroom because I was so scared. And then I lost where the centipede head went. So I didn't know. I just knew it was somewhere in the bathroom. Which is even scarier. Like not knowing where it is. But like knowing it's there. That's like really scary. Anyways. I need to open this up for air. Hold on. Oh, so anyways. Um. I saw the centipede. I got so scared. I literally, like, my brother's friends were over, and I was trying to, like, get them to help me kill it. We were using Nerf guns. Like, my mom wasn't home. Like, my boyfriend couldn't come over. Like, my friends couldn't come over. Like, no one could help me kill this thing. So I had to, like, be really fearful. And then, fast forward a little bit, I'm in the bathroom, and I see the centipede. Mind you, this centipede has caused me a lot of just, like fear and like I didn't use my bathroom for a long time because the centipede was in there and I didn't know where it was so at this point I'm done with the centipede I'm done I promise we're getting somewhere I was done with the centipede when I saw the centipede again in my bathroom I got um what is it bleach I got bleach and I sprayed it to death and it felt so good to do that. I saw another centipede in my room. I did get a little freaked out but I said you know what I'm getting that bleach and I just killed it okay so moral of the story moral of the freaking story there's a couple hugging over there and they look so sweet moral of the story i think a lot of the times our enemy looks a lot scarier at first glance and then we get a good look at him and we're like oh what okay bleach Oh no. At first I feel like it's scary and then you just kind of get your bearings and you're like, girl, like I could have killed him a long time ago had I known he was so small, so harmless, and so just like not worth your time and your fear had I had the right tool, the right weapon. In this case it was bleach. In our case it's Bible. Yeah. That's a, that's a whole preaching analogy right there. Okay, so I was talking to my friend Cecilia, and we were talking about 
daily bread getting into your bible because just i've been struggling with motivation like i have days where i'm just like this is so good and it's not a matter of like when i'm in my bible i'm struggling it's a matter of like actually getting into it because when i'm in it i'm in it usually um but i haven't been super motivated but kind of like thinking about it as just like it's your daily bread don't let your spirit go hungry has been really really good um and helping me get into my bible and just like it's your daily bread so all right the couple is like not leaving this area so all right um I'm actually overheating. This is very uncomfortable. We gotta finish this up. Okay. Okay. Next thing. I just think it's cool that we can ask God for things. Like when you look at Psalms and you read through Psalms, David and like the psalmist are just asking God for comfort and like God will give comfort. Like just ask. That's so cool. Also Isaiah 12. Let's flip quickly if you have your bible yeah i wrote down isaiah 12 and i just don't really remember why i wrote that down but if you want to look it up it's a great chapter next thing be unassuming in it all and at first ask questions i think like it's so easy to make drama over things if you assume but if you don't assume and you go into it kind of open-minded being like i'm sure there's an explanation for that i just feel like when you assume things like I've been guilty of assuming things, but, like, I just catch myself being assuming and just, like, getting angry from an assumption, not a fact. And I'm just like, nope, no, 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 we don't, we don't get angry about assumptions. We can get angry about facts, maybe, but, like, assumptions, we need to find out the details before we have emotions about this. So, I think that's been something for me. Also, another, okay, I think this is the last thing. Fight for friendships as seasons change. I think that, like, having a boyfriend definitely, like, changes the dynamics of your time. And in, like, the best ways, like, it, having a boy, like, it's not that, oh, you have a boyfriend, so sad, you don't have time to do anything. I'm not saying it like that. I'm just saying that, like, you just have to learn how to manage your time differently. And, like, your friends start to get boyfriends, and then it's, like, this whole thing. And so I feel like... It's interesting because your friendships, like, change, and they're bound to change, and that's beautiful, and, like, kind of sad in a way, like, you kind of, like, miss, like, when, like, the girlfriends only had, like, the other girlfriends, and, like, that's all it was, and you guys went to each other about everything, but also, like, your friendships change, and I think that as you grow up, and as, like, other friends get involved or like a boyfriend gets involved in a friend group or like with a girl in your friend group it's like hard sometimes to navigate like that friendship but I think that it's just worth acknowledging and like I just did this today like it's worth acknowledging that like friendships change as you get older and that's okay you're not gonna stay like talking to your bestie every single day like they're usually like it doesn't happen like that and you just got to stay in it. I feel like with a lot of communication between friends, it, it can be fine. And, like, you guys can have a beautiful relationship. Um, and I think sometimes the temptation is to just, like, give up on a friendship when it feels, like, just, like, really complicated. But that's just something that I've been trying to do. Like, really fight for my friendships and just treasure my friendships. And, like, enjoy my time as a teenager right now. And, like, spend time with my friends. Like, not getting too caught up in anything. Um, like, you're still a teenager. Be with your friends. Alright, I have Delta Math to do, guys. I have a video to edit. And I need to sleep, so... Have a blessed day. I hope that you enjoyed this video. If you did, let me know. And I just hope you have a blessed day, truly.